webinar. The point of these webinars is to support and um, provide information and inspiration for the global happiness and well-being movement that was launched this April at the United Nations, where we are working towards a new economic paradigm. So today we have Mary Judd of Mary Judd Communications, who was there at the United Nations on July 2nd through 4th and was part of um, one of the four working groups where we were uh, we came together and were tasked to 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 bring this work in a open and integrated manner um, to the rest of the world. And I know a couple of you on the calls were, were there. Dara, you were there. So we're recording this. Uh, the, the way that it usually works is about 30 to 45 minutes of talking, and then we'll have question and answer. So for your questions, you can either raise your hands. You'll see a little place next to your name where it says attendee list where you can raise your hands. Or you can put in questions or chat. And if you don't want yourself called on, then don't raise your hand. But if you do, you can put it in question or chat, and then we'll unmute you so we can hear you. So let's just do an example. So right now, Diana, I see you've raised your hand, so I'm going to unmute you. And you have a question. So go ahead, and Diana. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to unraise my hand or to raise my hand. OK. Well, that's <laughs> that was good. A OK, so I'm going to mute you again. All right. And the reason that we need to mute people is that it'll create a very bad feedback loop, um, particularly if you don't have a headset or, or if you have a telephone next to the computer. So what it ha will happen if I do call on you um, and the feedback loop starts, then we'll just immediately mute you. OK, so we'll get started on our webinar here just to let you know that our next webinar will be on the 5th of December. And that will be given by Alexandra Suarez, who is a professor, um, will speak about some of the psychology of happiness and why our brains, what happens to our brains when we feel happy or miserable, or, or rather what happens to our brains when we feel happy or desire. <laughs> so, um, but really, I personally, Mary, have been really, really looking forward to this webinar. Um, Mary has worked with the government of Bhutan has um, been working with positive psychologists and in communications and doing some amazing work. So thank you so much, Mary, for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, Laura. And I am excited to be here. Uh-oh, I'm echoing. Uh, it is a privilege to be able to spend time with you all and talk about ways to communicate something as important as increasing happiness and well-being. Uh, before I start, though, I do want to make sure you can hear me. And if there's a way that we can get rid of the echo. So you're not echoing for us, so it's recording and, and we're oh, not hearing an echo. So. Okay, that's all that matters. And I have another question, Laura. If we can't switch to my screen, um, I do have some video that I wanted to show. Okay. Is it possible that we can switch back and forth? We can, let's, let's just try to switch to your screen when you're ready to show the video. And, okay. Um, um, maybe it'll catch them. So. Okay, great. All right, well, we will start. Uh, first, I do want to thank you, Laura, for from the Happiness Initiative, your organization, uh, for organizing these webinars for us. It is very generous of you with your time, and it is extremely helpful for all of us to get to hear what other people are doing and to share what we are learning and figuring out with other people. So I really appreciate it. Uh, today, I'm going to share some of what I know about what is happening around the world. I'm on slide number one. You can see that I had a little fun playing with the word happening. Um, couldn't resist. There is so much going on around the world uh, with the emphasis on building happiness now, happiness and well-being. And it is, it's, uh, it's a privilege for me to get to share a snapshot of those who are building happiness. There are so many people and organizations that we could never ever begin to touch on the, the cream of the crop even in one short session like this. But I'm going to share primarily, um, take you on a personal tour of how I personally have navigated the happiness landscape and communicated it to a real wide variety of audiences. So the first the place that I would like to start our little tour is on slide number two. Welcome to a happier world. It is exciting, in my opinion, a really exciting time to be alive. 
when happiness is being taken so seriously? Uh, why is it important for us to communicate happiness and well-being? Well, happiness matters. It matters from the bedroom to the UN. <laughs> happiness is fuel. It is the fuel that motivates us to get up in the morning. It is the fuel that motivates us to work for the greater good. So we have extremes from our very, very personal lives to as grand a public arena as the United Nations and setting policy. Happiness is something we need to take very seriously. And fortunately, we have many, many very dedicated researchers who are specifically studying happiness and well-being. And um, many people who are at the, the April meeting are well aware of it, but I'm always surprised how many people aren't aware of the research and the, um, the work being done to better understand what exactly is happiness and why does it matter, what effect does it have on our lives, from our personal lives to our very collective societal decisions. The organization that I have highlighted here on slide number two is um, the Penn, University of Pennsylvania, which is really one of the hubs of happiness research. They have a positive psychology center. It is um, chaired by Dr. Martin Seligman, who's considered the father of positive psychology and one of the premier researchers in the area. They have the first Masters of Applied Positive Psychology program, one of very few in the world. And I believe there's a PhD program at Claremont College in California. Um, I recommend you checking out that website. You will get all sorts of information about positive psychology. I'll tell you a little bit about it in just a second, but I do want to go ahead and move to slide number three before I dive in and uh, quote one of the preeminent researchers in the field of positive psychology, Christopher Peterson, who very, very unfortunately, um, unexpectedly passed away just uh, probably less than a month ago. A huge loss to the field of positive psychology and to the the furthering of, of happiness and well-being in the world. Um, Chris Peterson said that if he could sum up all the research of happiness, of what, what it really means, what is, what is the key, he summed it up in these three words, other people matter. And personally, I've learned, I studied with Chris Peterson, I helped him in a couple different courses, and he, it's, it's a very sad loss, but it's also inspiring to take his work further and to communicate it as clearly, as pleasantly, and as factually as possible. So this, this webinar is dedicated to Chris Peterson. So let's move to slide number four and talk about why we are all interested in this today, the communication of happiness and well-being. As a communications major, I can't resist the question, what is communication in the first place? Communication involves four components. It involves a sender, in this case that is each of us who is communicating, our message, which is the second component. Our message in this case is happiness and well-being. You need a recipient, that is our audience, who are we communicating to? And in order for communication to take place, we, they, we need some sort of feedback to be assured that we actually did communicate and we're not just throwing messages out there. So this is really helpful to keep in mind as we each go forward communicating the happiness and well-being movement, the data, the tools, the different aspects. There's a little communications lesson for you. Now, what we're talking about today is slide number five, the big question. In my opinion, in order to communicate the happiness and well-being movement, the issues, the facts, we need to know what is happiness. What is it? What, what we know from much research and many personal experiences, I'm sure, what we value, what we each individually value, what co we collectively value defines our happiness. But so often we don't look to our values when seeking happiness. 
we look to things like jobs, relationships, uh, image, <laughs> status, money, all sorts of different things, often um, believing that they are going to increase our happiness when in fact very, very often they don't. And this was really what launched the field of positive psychology. After 50, 75 years of studying extensively unhappiness, depression, mental illness, researchers like Martin Seligman who, who uh, pretty much defined depression through, through findings like learned helplessness, becoming victimized, becoming complacent and feeling disempowered. After studying that for so long, they realized, wait a minute, we've, we're only studying half of, half of who we are. We're only studying half of our picture. If our goal is only to get people to neutral, you know, that's what we've been studying, how to get mental, um, mental illness people to just be able to function. What if we want to increase happiness? What if we want to move somebody, if normal is our zero level, what if we want to move someone from zero to five? How, what, what are the symptoms of mental wellness? What are the things that go right with us? So this is the, these are the questions that, are be, that is behind positive psychology and the study of what goes right with us. What makes a good life? How do we move from merely surviving to thriving? So that is where the delineation comes in of really pulling back the layers. What is happiness? What is well-being? What is thriving? And what do we need to get there? So it's very exciting, and I, I, I will share many resources from positive psychology later on to um, help everyone just know where to dive in and get some of the, the, the data, the tools, the specifics that are coming out. So that's the question, what is happiness? Slide number six, the messenger, that's us. As communicators, we need to understand the message. The message that we're communicating is happiness. We need to, as communicators, understand what is happiness. What do we value ourselves? If we don't get it, if we don't understand happiness, and we don't really value it, or know what we value, we are not going to be very effective communicators. And it may seem like a very simple, simple thing to just say, oh, well, what makes you happy? What do you value? I challenge you. Write down five things right now. What do you really value? Many people have a very hard time with that when it comes down to it. What really, really authentically makes you happy? Well, there is good news. If it's a struggle for you to define it, and that is where slide number seven comes in. Now, there is there are different, many, many different resources to help you define help you unearth what you value. Um, a research group in particular that I am familiar with and I've done a lot of work with is the VIA Institute. The VIA Institute was founded by the Mayerson Foundation, M-A-Y-E-R-S-O-N, the Mayerson Foundation, and they were the initial funders for much of the research into positive psychology. They funded Chris Peterson and Martin Seligman in a, an extensive survey of um, literature across time, philosophy, religions, sacred texts, um, icons, all sorts of things to find what are the universally valued character strengths and virtues. Believing that if we could get to that point, what do we universally value? That it is much, much easier to start really unearthing what do we as individuals and specific cultures value. That is where we're going to, to be able to get much closer to understanding and living according to what we all agree we value. So the VIA Institute, they look at this specifically. They have a survey. It's, um, Laura, if we can switch to my screen, um, I'll be able to share some things with you. Uh, there is a website here on slide number seven at the bottom, the viacharacter.org. And viacharacter.org is where you will find 
a survey that you can take. It's 265 questions. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. And what it reveals is it's self-report, so you answer it. It will reveal to you your top uh, character strengths and virtues. Great, Mary, you're, you're, we're on your, um, okay. your screen, so mm -hmm. I'm going to silence myself again, and then and we'll just use yours from here out. Okay, thank you. So the VIA Institute, the survey, I can take you to this website real quick. Um, and it's, to me, one of the absolute best discussion starters around as far as what you value, knowing what your family values, your friends, your coworkers, and the VIA Institute. This is what the screen will be, look like if you go to their website. Here's the website up here that is on the screen I showed you. And when you come onto the website, the survey is free. You can see where I'm, uh, my highlighter, my cursor is over here. The survey is free. It has been taken by nearly 3 million people around the world. Um, there's all sorts of data research that's been done um, that you can check out if you're a data, data person. Um, there are tools for teams, businesses. Uh, Dara, who is on the call, Dara and I recently worked on a video of uh, IBM Australia who's been using the VIA Pro and the VME reports. VME is for individuals. The Pro is for um, coaches, trainers, clinicians to use with clients. And there is a VIA team report uh, that you can also use if you're a, a VIA Pro can order team reports. Highly, highly effective. Um, now, I want to show you the reason that I'm spending so much time on this is because when we are clear on what we personally value and when we, the, the survey reveals things like signature strengths and virtues are things like kindness and generosity, capacity to love and be loved, curiosity, um, appreciation of beauty and excellence prudence and caution you know these are these are strengths that we don't normally um, use <laughs> we don't usually use these kinds of words about ourselves um, it is so empowering to take a look at your list of strengths or to share them with others and this is a video also that Laura and I worked on together um, I'm wondering if you all, are you all able to hear it? Laura? Sorry. I don't think, I'm not hearing the video. Let me know if you all can hear it. Yeah, I'm not hearing it. And okay. this is something that you and what Dara we could did. Do right? is, um, what we could do is, if you all, are you all on your computers? Mm -hmm. Are you able to go online? If everyone could go online, highlight the YouTube address that's here on slide number seven. We can watch the video together. Okay. Um, let me see. What I can do is I can send it to everybody. And because the screen's on your screen, Mary, if you could just make it real big because we're recording this so people can yes. um, can who are watching, listen to this later, can go ahead and, and do the same thing. So I'm going to send right, everybody okay. the URL right now. Let's see. It came out funny. What this is, is this is a video showing a group of school children, fourth graders, who were their their year the curriculum was based on these strengths and as you'll see in the video the the conversation that got started right at the beginning of the year around strengths and individual strengths was was uh, just <laughs> mind blowing what the the confidence that it gave these kids and the the understanding that they had for each other and for their teacher. And what that, as positive psychology research shows, is it primes 
the pump. It just put everyone in a place that is, was much, much more empowering and much more likely for them to succeed in the classroom, outside of the classroom, and through their relationships. And what is all of this about? Very much about happiness, well-being, and flourishing, moving from surviving to thriving. So as you watch this video, think about it as a communicator. This was a way that we were communicating to the audiences that see this video, happiness and well-being at work, how the tools, this teacher very much understood the, the tools of using strengths and some of the positive psychology tools in the classroom. So take this out as a communicator in ways that you can use happiness and well-being knowledge that you have. Are we so ready do you, to start do, it? Yeah, now? do you want all of this to, I'm, I'm going to just make a little experiment since you, I'm going to change the presenter and see if it will, because I know this will present and something is wrong with, with the, the software today. So let's just see, um, let's see if I can show it on my screen. Okay, because otherwise I have it real big on mine. Yeah. Can you hear this, other people? Today's title for your journal entry is going to be, I is the senior. Oh, yeah, okay. Each year, you know, we have each year has a choice to make about what kind of culture they would like to be and what kind of culture is the best for them. Culture based on students' understanding of themselves, understanding of one another, and connecting with one another. Respect is a cultural requirement, a culture of exploration. That is a cultural requirement that needs to be met. Let's get to that. Laura? It's pretty muffled from where I am. Okay. I don't yeah. know if it is for others. Yes. We could just, I can recommend people to watch it. Okay. On their own time. That's fine. <laughs> All right. We, we have got just a, sometimes this happens. So I'm glad that, um, it's happening with people who are all lovely and wonderful. <laughs> so I'm going to send yes. this back to you. <laughs> okay. And I will, what I'll do is um, for a couple others, I have some really terrific videos I was excited to share, but um, I will share the links and uh, maybe just show some without the volume on a couple. Okay. Just to, um, okay, show my and we're sending the presentation back to you. So, um, okay, hoping it'll it. come back to you. Yes. Okay. I can see your website. Your, okay. your... There we go. All right. And I'm going to mute okay. myself again. So now we will stay on slide number seven. I'll just describe a little bit like, um, hopefully you all heard me. The video is fantastic. There is an amazing director, producer, and um, we worked with an incredible teacher and group of kids. And the reason that it is just so important is it shows the effects of really taking seriously individual keys to happiness, which is what do each of these individual kids have as a strength, and getting them to understand how something like gratitude is something that they can actively practice, and what effects does it have on them? What effects does it have if they acknowledge being persistent? Persistence is shown to be much more of a, of a clear indicator of academic success than IQ. So if you can help kids understand that they have strengths, that they have, each, each strength has a place in the classroom, it, it really fueled them. So back to that initial slide of um, why does happiness matter, it's fuel. And so for these kids to feel valued and understand their strengths, they felt they had fuel to take them into their different situations and it, it we watched it we witnessed it and we kept track over time that it had a huge impact on these kids and their success so that is a clear example of, of the happiness research put into place and working and as communicators if we can understand you know I rec highly recommend watch that video go to the via character.org site go to the via YouTube channel and watch some of these because they have great examples of ways to use these strengths in your work, in your communications. Okay, so slide eight. There are other surveys out there that help us um, unearth what makes us happy. Laura, 
is I'm you know she's the expert behind the Happy Counts, the Happiness Initiative, who has I'll, I'll read this paragraph here that she so serendipitous, serendipitously posted yesterday about what the Happiness Initiative has as far as a survey, and um, highly recommend everyone checking this out as well. The Happiness Initiative has an internally and externally validated subjective indicator of well-being based on Bhutan's gross national happiness indicators that is available for anyone to use at any scale. This is a deeply grassroots project, and the point is to use the GNH subjective indicator to motivate and inspire people and move the conversation and culture to happiness. Laura can issue anyone a unique code and results once a group has taken the survey with a hyperlink so they can use this in their work. So thank you, Laura. And um, this, uh, this is a, another example of, of helping a, on a larger scale communities determine what they value and what makes them happy. So it's much, much easier to get shared vocabulary, shared goals, moving towards the desired change. Um, Alyssa Clark, who's also in our UN group, um, belongs, or is, is um, affiliated with the Global Vision Institute. And this is their website there, and they are working on an extensive value survey as well. Um, there are many, many other surveys out there, and a couple sites that I'll mention in our resources slide later on. Okay, so slide number nine, uh, the global learning community. These these surveys, whether they're for individuals or for larger communities, are, are adding to the data bank and to the tools to take happiness learning to a much larger, larger, larger level. Um, there are so many organizations and cool projects out there that are doing things on a global level, a really expansive learning, and they're building communities. As much as uh, many of us poo-poo the, the e-communities, techno, <laughs> Facebook, and things like that that are just keeping us all glued to our computer screens, there is a lot of exciting community building that's going on through technology, as many of us know. I've highlighted a couple here. Um, the Kiva Project, I encourage everyone to go to this website. Um, I, there's a, a school nearby that I'm working with that has a group of sixth graders and they are connected to students in Costa Rica, Uganda, Russia, and um, they're building other communities with other schools around the globe. And what they're doing is they, this website, the Kiva Project, has a list of people from around the world who are in need of a loan. And they're, they're micro loans. And this group has gotten a grant. Um, the local school got a grant of $2,500. And so they've been discussing with the students in other classrooms around the world who also have small grants and they are deciding as a group they're researching the grants they're making the decisions um, how they can help what what's the best fit for them it's so exciting and it's really really opening up these kids worlds and their strengths on many levels they are learning they are um, entertained by all the cultural differences and um, things that they're sharing with kids from around the world. They are, in turn, very aware of what they have. So their gratitude is increased, and gratitude is shown to um, also increase connections. Uh, that's a whole other lecture I could talk about. Um, but it's very exciting what they're doing in projects such as this. Mentor Coach is another group that I, I have done a lot of work with, and I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Mentor Coach is uh, based in Bethesda, Maryland, and Ben Dean, the founder, he conducts bi-weekly um, telecalls, much like this. However, his audiences are between two and 300 people at a time. And the, the calls are free. They're one, in, one hour, hour and a half with global thought leaders from around the world, uh, obviously. Um, on, and, and they're so inspiring. A couple of weeks ago, he had Dr. John Trimble, uh, premier writing instructor from the University of Texas who talked about writing specifics and also the industry these days. And he talks to um, oh, Gretchen Rubin who wrote The Happiness Project. And you can go on the mentorcoach.com website and 
get on their mailing list to be included in these these calls. They're they're incredible. So he is a, a real pioneer. Of, he was the person who brought uh, authentic happiness and much of the teleclasses to the global audience, which was Martin Seligman's launch into positive psychology education at a, a large scale level. Uh, the Global Vision International, this is a group that um, takes tourists all over the world to places that they're able to help make a difference working on projects. This is one of many organizations. Uh, the reason that I bring these up, global learning communities, as communicators, if we're wanting to expand, much like we are on this call, our reach, there are so many different ways we can do it, and each one of these three is very different in their their audience and in their 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 uh, overall content. But their presentation, their uh, their mission is much the same, and that's increasing well-being, increasing connections, and building community, building understanding of others around the world. So those are three that I'm highlighting that I. I'm very excited to share. Okay, slide number 10. Many of you have probably seen the Happy Movie. Uh, I call it a ha global happiness field trip. It is another uh, very effective discussion starter for what really does make us happy. Um, the movie has several vignettes, probably 10 to 15 vignettes that take place all around the world, everywhere from Swamplands of Louisiana to uh, communal living in Denmark to um, hundred-year-old women in Okinawa, uh, the, their community to um, a rickshaw driver and his family in uh, Calcutta. So it what what it does is it really just shows. It's one of the classic examples of show, don't tell. It shows people where they live and talking about what makes them happy. And it's interspersed with researchers from around the world who, have, who are discussing the aspects of happiness research, um, the effects of play on our well-being, the um, hedonic treadmill where we often are chasing the wrong things in search of happiness. Um, it's a great, great tool, educational tool, which takes me to slide number 11. And um, what happy, what the Happy Movie did in communicating happiness was a very, very specific, showing beautiful footage, very good filmmaking, nice music. You know, they, they, they used their smarts. They, they made us laugh, they made us cry, and they taught us a lot with the research. So what, what they've gone and done now, and I helped work on the educational materials, is there is a, an, an extensive curriculum that, that follows the film with all sorts of um, suggested activities, um, lessons, and ideas for how to use the happy movie in education. They are available now for secondary and higher education on the website. Um, does this happy movie, does this happiness business resonate with business? Is it is it meaty enough and strong enough to take into policy? Slide number 12, this is a quick shot of a recent workshop that I did um, just called the Happy Toolkit. Very general introduction to happiness research, happiness tools. This group of people, did you know, they're from all over the city of Albany, um, all sorts of professions. Very few knew each other, and as you can see in this picture, interacting right away. This is content people are craving. It is content that is relevant, and it's um, it's really important for us to take seriously, to bring people together and better understand themselves and each other. Uh, we saw it on a grand scale at the United Nations meeting, happiness and well-being, developing a new economic paradigm. Talk about ha taking happiness into the meaty content of life. <laughs> happiness and economics. Um, Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel Prize winning professor from Princeton University, won the Nobel Prize in economics. And he is a behavioral psychologist. He merges happiness and economics quite often and 
these, um, as we saw at the UN meeting, there were so many experts there who are well aware of the need to take happiness and well-being much more seriously and how we can incorporate it into policy. Um, as far as what Bhutan has done, slide number 14, Bhutan and others now are um, calling out the dimensions of happiness. Bhutan came up with nine specific to their company, their country, and um, other places, other countries, other states, other uh, communities are doing the same thing. Good governance is one of the domains that Bhutan named as an, a very significant area in their well-being, good governance. Um, as communicators, as marketers of the happiness and well-being content, we can use things like the nine domains as place launching pads for projects, for target audiences, for um, highlights to use with a with a different group. You can you can pair these together. Some examples of organizations that are using the happiness research. Um, playing to the, the domain of good governance. College students, if any of you are familiar, there, there's a group called Democracy Matters, and they are in college campuses around the country. They are really working to empower college students to take part in the process, and they've done a terrific job. Um, at a community level, I didn't put on here, there are cities like Somerville, Massachusetts, right near Harvard, where uh, Daniel Gilbert, who's a prominent researcher, at, um, he is helping that city define their domains, their dimensions of happiness, and measure measure what matters. States, the state of Maryland has uh, Green Maryland, go to their website, greenmaryland.gov, they have surveys, they, uh, Sean, Sean, uh, Sean McGraw, Laura, you'll remember, um, he he's phenomenal. <laughs> Highly recommend giving him a call or talking to him what they're doing in Maryland and he advised Bob Costanza in Oregon for their project too. These are very progressive people who are taking the surveys similar to Laura's, um, taking them into state government. The departments are measuring what their real mission is, how are they doing, how are people in the state feeling about how they're doing, it's really holding everyone accountable for taking a look at, at their actions, their goals, and how we're all doing together. It's very, very exciting. And obviously nations are doing it as well. Bhutan, a pioneer in the, in the area. And GNH USA, Gross National Happiness USA, is just busy doing all kinds of this, this work, surveys, um, activities, and is a great resource great place to share and to retrieve information. So a question to all of you communicators is what other domains do these relate to? You can use them as an entry point. For example, Green Maryland, other domains that have been mentioned by Bhutan, um, the environment. Uh, Green Maryland obviously also relates to the environment. Um, if you go to their site, there are cultural aspects to it. Democracy, this can relate to um, community also. So if you have a community group, you can look at some tools like this, see how they are bringing together people to make community. Um, how is Maryland getting their departments to cooperate and work together? If you're going to be talking to a, a business group at IBM or a business group at um, a local chamber of commerce, you can look to this website, see how they are bringing people together. How can you transfer it into an area that you're going to talk to? These are ways, we, things that we could all brainstorm together on another call. So number, slide number 15, good business. There are many businesses out there. I'm highlighting a couple that I get emails from all the time who have vast resources. Green America has a green, uh, the green yellow page, <laughs> the green pages that list businesses around the country and extensive descriptions of what they do, what they offer. Um, equal exchange, fair trade is a, on a much larger level, global level. Again, what domains do these relate to and how can you adapt some of their tactics 
for your needs. Slide number 16, community, is another domain that Bhutan mentions and that many of us uh, understand the importance of in our lives. Back to Chris Peterson's quote of other people matter. Um, we need each other. We're happier when we are socializing and when we're together, we have people to lean on. For some reason I'm echoing all of a sudden. Oh, Mary, this is Laura. I'm, you're echoing because I'm on. I'm just mindful. Okay. I'm just a little bit mindful of the time. Um, and we did get right. a, late, a little bit of a late start, but I was wondering, um, I know you have about 10 more slides, um, and I would love it if there was time for Q&A. So I just wanted to just put a little oh, reminder yeah. in there. So I'm going to mute myself. Definitely. <laughs> sure. Oh, thank you. And they won't, they'll go quickly because they're re, they were related to a video I wanted to show, so that's okay. Um, so this is just a little what the mantra that I keep saying, we're all, we are all alone in this together. And what I mean by that is it, each one of us has our role towards our greater good. Um, so our own happiness is important to take seriously as well as what it contributes to everyone else. So um, the next slide, happiness with heft. Happiness, um, discussing it can be very, very <laughs> effective in some situations that are very difficult. This slide shows a group of soldiers. Many of them are active duty right now that I recently worked with. Um, I ran a retreat with Darden Smith, this man right here, who's a musician, and these Rodney Foster and Jay Clementi are also songwriters. And what they did is we spent a weekend um, hearing the stories one-on-one -on -one or small groups with these soldiers, and the songwriters took their stories and turned them into a song. Very, very powerful. And much of the programming was based on um, the, the research into positive psychology and how you create a community, how you organize an event to maximize the positive outcome. And this slide shows the ending of the event. And Daniel Kahneman's research on peak and end theory that we, we our takeaway is a peak moment and the ending, whether it's a vacation or a colonoscopy. <laughs> So uh, I really made an emphasis with Darden on you know, our ending being very powerful and positive. And so we end up with a, a, a group hug, basically, which is crazy when you see how very, very private and non-social these guys are when they first get there. And by the end, we're in a group and we're going around one at a time giving a highlight. And uh, this one man right here who's a sergeant in the Army said it restored his faith in humanity. So getting together, creativity, music, things that we know make us happy, conversation, listening. We had no TV, no internet at this retreat. It was simply talking, sharing, getting creative, and um, it was dramatically effective, and that increased a lot of people's happiness. Um, you can hear the songs. Uh, you can watch some video on these websites here. I highly recommend it. Very, very inspiring. So uh, slide 19 is resources, just a handful of great magazines with some terrific ideas, um, very favorite, some of my very favorites. This Intelligent Optimist has a, a website right now that's an online auction. One of the most creative ways to, uh, for the new economy in my opinion, very positive items that are um, donated by readers and users and everyone's bidding on them. Um, books, here's a highlight of some terrific books if you're interested in positive psychology, happiness, and um, using it to communicate. Mindset is terrific by Carol Dweck. These are all terrific books. Um, additional websites, I've listed several here. Um, many of them are old and full of information, some are newer, and building, and welcome our input. Uh, finally, a recap. Effective communication, it demands several of our, what I've discussed here. The sender, it demands us to know thyself. What makes you happy? Start taking it seriously and then use it in your communications. For me, I use this, um, I'm using it today. <laughs> My appreciation of beauty and excellence, I had fun making these slides. It was a challenge for me. Um, they're not near beautiful enough for my take, but I had fun. My love of learning is, is having fun sharing this with you all, because we know teaching is learning. Um, for our message, we need to know it, live it, and love it. 
know the happiness research, practice it. Um, our audiences, we need to know our audiences. Who are we delivering this to? And how do we help them know why happiness matters to them? Feedback, we need to get reactions from the people that we're communicating to. Put out surveys, um, do post interviews, watch for changes in their in their behavior or their products, whatever we're working with, and follow up with them. And most importantly, in my opinion, have fun. <laughs> if you're not having fun, you're not communicating happiness very well. It's, a, it's one, of the, one of the requirements. And I'll leave you with my favorite quote, there is no duty we so underrate as the duty of being happy, for it is in being happy that we sow anonymous benefits upon the world. So thank you. Thank you for your time. And Laura, I'm ready for any questions. Great. So sorry to be so fast, but we have a lot to get through. Oh, no, it's amazing. You did an amazing um, so, sort of overview of the of the happiness world. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> so I just wanted to say the title of the positive education and character strengths video is the one that Dara and Mary produced together. Um, so just for the sake of the recording. Um, it's Positive Education and Character Strengths, which you can look up on YouTube. Um, and does soon any... we'll, have, we'll have the IBM video ready to share, too. It just hasn't been officially approved yet. So we'll share that link with everyone. Great. Um, so we'll, if people have questions, you can raise your hand or you can, um, you can put the questions in. So, Mary, I guess my question is, I mean, looking at the, the happiness field it's a relatively new field although there, there is a lot that's being done um, where do you see this going and what do you see what do you see that needs to happen in the next uh, few months in the next year and the next five years well uh, well it's a really good question and one that a lot of the people in the field especially the researchers um, talk about a lot one of the I think it's very exciting people are, are excited at the growing awareness of authentic happiness. You know, there, one of the risks is that happiness can seem very fluffy, and, and most of us know that. It's a tough thing to communicate on a meaty level, but I think that is changing more people as more research comes out, which is really critical. Funding for research is very critical because it has to move to specific data that can show effects over time. And there are some really powerful studies, like an optimism study that uh, was done with heart attack victims. And um, people, they, they did a pre and post, whether they're pessimists or optimists, and 16, um, 16 of each. And of the 16 pessimists, after their second heart attack, one was alive out of 16. Out of the optimists, 11 of the 16 were alive after a second heart attack. And so that's a very distinct um, study right there that can show the effects of optimism because they ruled out other factors like blood pressure, cholesterol, um, several different things. And um, that right there you can you can take to policymakers, you can take to health groups, you can take to um, communities. It's specific. So as the research keeps growing and gets more specific, the the meteor side of happiness is taken more seriously which I think is really good for all of us um, because, you know, on an individual level and then it trickles out to communities and we start realizing maybe we need to rethink our priorities. What, what are we doing and is it really making us happy or, or not? So that, does that make sense? Yeah, beautiful. Thank <laughs> Where you. I think the field is going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, oh, I, for all of us, I think it's just keep keep communicating it in as many arenas as we can, but also study it, you know, study it because you get fired questions and, you know, it's very helpful. I, that's why I gave you the resources, the web resources to stay up on some of those bullet points of, of why happiness is important. Uh, the Green Maryland site, you know, he's showing it on an economic and a community, a civil level. Uh, I think just staying up on the research. There's so much good work being done by really good, smart people with great intentions. Beautiful. Thank you. If anybody has a question, that would be great. Um, if not, 
then I we can um, I'll ask one more question and then we'll close, which is, um, Mary, just assuming that tomorrow um, you got as much funding and support as you needed to do whatever project that you wanted to do in the field of happiness, uh, what would you do? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a really fun question. Uh, but the first thing that pops in my head is education. Um, because just the, the uh, you know, we, everybody goes to school pretty much, and everybody needs to go to school. <laughs> but uh, from the top to the bottom, a research project I'm working on right now at a middle school is really exciting. And we have everyone from the superintendent to you know, the students involved, counselors, lead teachers in between. And when you can get a culture shift towards this, it's um, it just dramatically, as we as you'll see when you watch the fourth grade video, it, it just changes perceptions of oneself, each other, and what's possible. So I think education would be an area that I would I would dive into. Great, thank you so much, Mary. It was really, I've been really looking forward You're to this welcome. webinar. So it was really wonderful. Um, so, I hope it was helpful. It's, yeah. it's hard to digest it all into one. I could go on for like 40 of these, but it's very <laughs> fun. And thank you, for, thank you for asking me and letting me share it. Thank you so much. So this is recorded. Um, it'll, the recording will be up on Basecamp um, for the, the Global Happiness and Wellbeing Movement Basecamp. So I'm going to be happy to send anybody access to that. Our next webinar is December 5th, and that will be at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it'll be by Dr. Alexandra Suarez, who will talk about what's happening in our brain when we um, are happy and when um, we're um, we're not happy, which is usually what's happening in our brain when we desire something that we don't have. Um, surprisingly enough, that brings unhappiness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I'm excited for that one too. And if you'd mm -hmm. let people know about the webinar um, that's coming up, um, you can use the, the Happy Counts URL and the information there, but you're also more than welcome to let your clients know and let them know that this is something that you're a part of, because that's the point of this, is to be doing this together. So thank you again, Mary, so very much. And, oh, you're welcome. Um, wishing everybody a wonderful day. I'm going to unmute everybody so everybody can say goodbye, even though there's going to be feed feedback. So uh, let's see if I can unmute everybody. Unmuting. OK, so we can all say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Laura. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank goodbye. You, thank Bye. you, Laura. Thank, thank you, you, Laura and Mary. Bye. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye.